Good. Got it. Got it. Hi, guys. I'm just going to tell the team that we're in the yoga. Okay, we're in the, and they can make an announcement. Hi, guys. All right, welcome everyone. I'm here with Harry Maddity. Harry, it took us like six months to arrange this. I'm so glad we made it happen in the new year. Yeah, exactly. New year, new start. Um, don't procrastinate. I'm so guilty of that. Um, but I love doing these and I rarely get asked. So when I do, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So awesome. Happy to be here. So yeah. for people who don't know you, I mean, let's, I, I feel like in, in introducing you, it's like, I kind of have to introduce your sister too, right? Because she was how you got into your therapy. Is that right? I my sister? No, it wasn't my no. sister. I do have a sister though. No, it oh. wasn't my sister at all. No, no, no. Who oh, are you thinking okay. of? Interesting. I, for I some reason, I thought of. Monica was your sister. No. Oh no, God. Oh, oh, I mean, she's a queen. Um, and actually, she did get me into it, but she's okay. not my sister though. But I love oh, her. Oh, maybe it was that, and maybe it was sister used in a more of a like a. a yeah, I mean, she's got friend. loads of people on on this. Um, we're all powerful, but yeah, it was her for a lot of people, and definitely me. And so with urine therapy, I mean, so your books have centered around more on aged urine. And that's really where we want to have this conversation today is like there's there's urine therapy and fresh urine and, and then there's and then there's aged urine. As far as I know, the oldest reference to aged urine is in is in a Buddhist text. Right. Um, yeah. Is that is that what you found, too? Yeah. And I'm actually working on my third uh, urine therapy book. I'm going to write loads of my life. And the next one is the link between aged urine, not fresh, aged urine, the Buddha, the Vipassana very strong link um, because it's written in the Pali Canon. Plus, I think personally, it's pretty obvious because I've done the experiments. Um, it really made the Buddha enlightened. It sped up his Vipassana. So it was the meditation, but it was the aged urine drinking that he promoted in his lifetime that pushed him towards the edge. Because I guess why I'm so passionate about what you said, aged urine, not fresh urine. It's yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so for those who don't know how urine ages, that it ferments, just talk a little bit about that, about what's going on as, because it, it's a, it's such a funny thing. I know, cheers. I have my, I have my whiskey bottle <laughs> oh, that nice. I keep oh, on my desk. <laughs> very aged that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of people think that like, I mean, even people who ferment food have no concept that urine ferments and fermenting is it's, it's to me, it's a, uh, it's a way that things, rather than breaking down, they do the, it's the opposite of entropy or negentropy, where things actually become more biologically and evolutionary complex. They add in, they add in complexity rather than break down into building blocks. Yeah, um, so yeah, and people have no idea that technically anything, that, um, anything natural uh, ferments. And I think there's the, generally people seem to assume the fermenting of fruits, vegetables, uh, even urine, uh, uh, breast milk, anything is bad. But actually, mm -hmm. I've come to find on my journey of experimentation and watching and learning from people on Facebook that aged urine is only one of many things that seems to grow more powerful when it ferments. But boy, does urine become more powerful when it ferments. Um, very obvious um, when you try it, you to try the age, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the biggest differences I've noticed is swishing with age and the more research I've done for, uh, for the, my wild habits book that's coming out shortly is, uh, the, Which the, I bought, by bacteria. the way, I, think I bought it. I saw it on the top of your Facebook. Um, I bought oh, uh, your book. Of course. Yeah. Um, the book, your book. So, your book. Yeah, so yes. The book's book. so mm -hmm. the tongue bacteria, like the, so the microbiomes, right? We have all these different microbiomes in the body and the tongue microbiome or the oral loam around the tongue, the whole mouth microbiome really is dictating the health of the rest of the body. It's like, if something's off there, it's one of like the early, it's the canary in the coal mine. It's one of the early warning signs that, that other microbiomes, maybe the colon microbiome or the gut microbiome are also off or lung micro or skin or et cetera. So the bacteria in the tongue, CRIPS, create nitric oxide, but adults over 40 in modern civilization have have almost no nitric oxide production from their tongues anymore really i didn't know that because wow. the oral is yeah. so disturbed so one of the things that i noticed from swishing aged urine right away was like my mm. like the little cracks and, and and weird imbalances in my tongue just started to go away mm. do you mean like the whites in your tongue and um those kind of things yeah and just like cracks yeah. in the tongue if you look at like a baby's tongue or a little kid's tongue there's almost yeah. no cracks no tremors there's no scallops there's no uh, mm. what in Ayurvedic medicine, we would see as imbalances that are showing up at the level of the tongue. And so the, 
to me, like right away, I was like, oh my gosh, this is kind of wild how compared to swishing, because I've been a swisher for a while with coconut oil and, uh, you know, other base oils, but wow, holy cow, like H. Duren does something that is clearly feeding mm. the cells of the mouth. And then one can extrapolate there with drinking or doing enemas or, or rubbing into the skin, how it's feeding, feeding the microbiomes. So yeah, tell me more of what, I mean, I know with, um, with swishing too, you're getting it under your tongue. So you're getting more direct absorption right into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And, to, and just describe to you, like, why is, why back to the Buddha, like, why, how do you think it works in terms of elevating consciousness? Oh God, that's a great question. Cause I think, um, I mean, I think I've got to figure it figured out. I mean, there's a lot of debate still, um, why aged urine, the fermentation of aged urine becomes much more powerful than fresh urine, which anyone will realize when they go through this process of trying fresh and then developing into age. Well, I think, I think I figured it out and that's why I want to talk about it more. I talked about it a bit in the second book. I talked about more in the third, why the Buddha, um, basically, I mean, there's loads of things going on, but it's structured water is urine, even fresh urine from an even an ill person. So when you put structured water, like the opposite of, a, I don't know, tap water or bottled spring water, because it's been out of the sunlight for a long time, you take structured water back in your system. It does something magical. It really hydrates you. So wherever it goes, it hydrates the cell in that particular part of the body. So you drink it, it'll hydrate the cells. So you put it on the tongue, it hydrates the tongue. You put it up the bum, it hydrates the colon. Um, and then aged urine becomes more structured to a level that we can't imagine. Hence the main reason why it becomes so powerful. Um, and it becomes uber super structured is my joke and uh, Gerald Pollock talks about it at the four phase of water he'd be proud if he was open-minded to the fact that Asia is structured I don't know I haven't asked him I'm not sure anyone has yet we'll see about that but yeah it basically becomes uber super structured like and it becomes highly negatively charged and the opposite of like disease because it starts pulling out the diseases wherever it goes when it's extremely negatively charged pretty much every disease is the opposite so it becomes like a magnet an electrical magnet gives you more electricity and this magnet goes into the body and pushes everything out the waste to a deep level so not like on the surface whereas fresh urine could do that probably for some things like the blood but the age urine goes deeper it goes into it gives you a deeper level of detox and because it's so structured it elevates your consciousness um and it's all tied into the, the, the um, Buddha and Vipassana meditation because what I found is I've done it before my last Vipassana, I did um, age during drinking and I found that my concentration for meditation became very extreme with age during. It's a superpower of concentration and you need concentration for Vipassana meditation. In fact, you need concentration for any meditation. The more mm -hmm. concentration you have, the better your meditation will be. So therefore, it, it, it magnified times 10 my Vipassana meditation. So I'm like convinced. I already know because I've written um, this four quotes from the Buddha in the Pali Canon. He talked about age during as medicine, mm -hmm. but he didn't. I, I think only one quote talks about for Nirvana, for the others were just medicine. But actually, I think he's pretty obvious. He meant as well for, uh, for enlightenment. You know, so he was saying to people, here's free medicine called age during in his time, 2,500 years ago. And here's another medicine for your Vipassana to make your. Uh, removal of traumas and you know your escape from duality much easier through age urine so yeah that's why i think on it and that's why i want to write this next book which i'm getting done the way but i'm super passionate about awesome yeah and i just want to say because i did a bunch of research on structured water and in, in the scientific community like there's all the debunking stuff but one physicist i came across at arizona state university his name's paul davies and in uh and in a lecture he gave, it's on quantum biology, the hidden nature of nature, he says that. And I'm just gonna read. He says, the water from your tap in your bathroom is completely different from the water inside your cells because water is a polar molecule and the way it lines up around organic molecules, water in a biological system becomes ordered. These molecules are not just chaotic. It's a very, and this is where he ends in this conversation is it's a very complex, complex subject and only partially understood. But what I keep seeing is there's just more and more of a divide between holistic solutions that seem, that's it, it, that like make sense from the experience of it. So it doesn't require some sort of philosophical extrapolation, right? It's just that you feel it, you notice it because you have the lived experience of it. In yoga, we call that svadhyaya, sva, self -dhyaya is to know. So it's from self-knowing, self-realization, self-knowing, right? Not from needing to analyze it. Um, and it just seems to me like there's this, 
this this huge gap uh, between what like what is structured water, right? Because people don't have an understanding of like this water that did come out of my tap and is boiled and has some ginger root in it is really different than this that was organized by my body that I peed out and has just had exposure to you know air and sunlight, uh, and it has it this whole idea of, of how, how the energy works of, of that it's polar, that you have a plus and you have a minus. And, and then that brings us into some of the research with, with the negative ions, right? That we know that there's this really strong polarity as the urine ages, it seems like the negative ions increase and we can measure that with an, with an ORP meter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, to me, this is, so do you want to talk a little bit about that in, in any, yeah, tell me what you know about that. Yeah, sure. So um, I think the difference between structured and unstructured to me is like unstructured is basically dead water. Um, there's no polarity, like you said, there's no electricity in it. We are electric uh, magnetic beings. So we need for optimal, like you said, high consciousness at the beginning and to thrive and to be as healthy as possible. We need structure, everything's structured, geometria, the patterns of the universe. When we take psychedelics, we realize everything is not solid. Everything is like, structured in some kind of amazing way. Well, that includes our urine because that keeps us alive, even an ill person's. But even an ill person's urine, when it ages, everyone's urine, when it ages, it becomes more polarized, more structured, more electrical. Uh, more optimal for your health. You'll feel, like you said at the beginning, the difference. Um, there's one thing to know. I think I, I don't know a lot, but I like to know and explain things because it helps me and to explain to other people. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, I just know it's super structured and it's because of what you said. Like we know in the communities now that the aged urine becomes more structured. It ages quicker when you put in sunlight. Now what, what ages quicker, what normal water um, becomes more structured in sunlight, even spring water in sunlight becomes more uh, structured. Uh, another thing we know about aged urine, when you put in a freezer in the cold, accidentally or not, if it's just cold, it ages quicker. This again goes in line with a the theory that even normal water, spring water, ages quicker when it's colder because um, the structured water is like a four phase. It's like between liquid and solid. It's like ice. Ice is structured water too. I'm not saying it's healthy because it might be tap water ice, but um, yeah, it's, it's a gel water, basically, aged urine. It's not liquidy, it's gel-like. And our entire blood system is gel-like too, because we're made of structured fresh urine. But if we put an increased viscosity of gel water, basically aged urine, into our body, it gives the cells, it drives right into the cells and it gives them the energy that they need. We need gel water. The more living you are, the more your water is like, your blood is gel water. And the less, the closer you are to death, the more liquidy and unlike the four phase it is. So the more four phase water you put in your body, the more energy, vitality, detoxification speeds go up a lot. So it, it, there's so many angles for this to, to get people what's, into it. I'm sorry, what's phase four? Oh, so the phase four is the four phase of water. It's um, something that Gerald Pollock um, coined. Like there's liquid, solid and gas as water, but it's yeah. really a four phase been discovered. And that's between a solid and a liquid between them. So like a gel, like a jello water. It's okay. not solid, it, but it's not liquid, it's in between. And that's what our blood is made up of. That's what um, spring water that's been out in the sun is made of. That's what fruit water is made of because of the sunlight, the structure. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely what happens to aged urine. It becomes a, a gel water, which is what the body needs. The body doesn't need a liquid. Uh, blood it needs a gel water blood um you know and that's what the age gives you it's a uh, oh, i don't know i think it's one yeah it's the vis so it's like the it's the viscosity something with the viscosity is connected to the to the the negative ions and the polarity that changes the correct and, as and you it said, does the, change yeah, the, the texture yes the negative ions definitely like you said the ought meter um goes up and also when negative ions goes up the alkalinity of something has to go up and for the human mm -hmm. to thrive in this reality, overall, the parts of the body, especially the blood, has to be as alkaline as possible. Not every part, I understand the stomach and all that, but the age doesn't interfere. But generally, to thrive, humans need a high dose of alkalinity because it seems like we're bombarded by stress and acidity from diet, yeah. from thoughts. So basically, when you dump a load of alkaline, you know, really alkaline aged urine that's highly negatively charged, you thrive. I mean, there's people that have talked about um, Otto Warburg cures disease with alkalinity. I think, to me, that's what I lean towards. Um, alkalinity in the body creates optimal conditions for higher consciousness and that's definitely why the buddha and us that have tried it recognize there's something going on when we drink or put under the tongue aged urine you can feel different i mean how did you feel when you first took it okay the age 
Well, what I, I mean, I think the biggest thing I noticed, and it's funny, I had, there's a few things I want to share. Um, well, and I want to break some things down first. So alkalinity and negative ions, right? So sometimes people get confused about that because on the pH scale, alkalinity is from seven to 14. It's on the higher side, but what it's actually showing is that there's more negative ions. For those who don't know ORP, we're talking about oxidation reduction potential. So oxidation it, like uh, oxidative stress is one of the ways that we can measure uh, allostatic load on the body. So this is, this is coming straight from like Western medicine, Western science. It's like, if you're trying to see how broken down a body is, how rapidly it's aging, how, 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 um, how many stressors, how many negative stressors there are accumulating, you're going to see that show up in, in the allostatic load, which is measuring the amount of, of oxidative stress. So this is the opposite of that. This is what is uh, the, the urine, especially the aged urine, because regular urine's at like negative 50 ORP, whereas aged goes to like negative 200 ORP, right? Right, well, I guess an ill person's could even go a bit lower than negative 50, so even pluses, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, uh, but generally you're right. Depending on what's, yeah, yeah if like depending on what the person's eating and what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, exactly. sure, that's, <laughs> you yes, know, you're very, very your, your pee's not gonna be. <laughs> have that many negative ions. So, and, and what we're talking about here is that it's the negative ions that seem to pull disease out of the body, that it serves like, it does serve like a magnet and it, and it literally pulls congestion and confusion and toxicity out of the cells. We know it increases oxygen supply within red blood yes. cells, right? We know yep. all of a sudden the body's getting a lot more energy and that we need the oxygen to actually pull oxygen molecules to actually pull toxicity. Out yeah, exactly. Increased oxygen, um, zeta potential to red blood cells. The, the blood becomes more smooth and free flowing and less sticky. Um, what I was going to say, the free radicals. I mean, there's a theory out there that the free radicals is what ages us. And that's a plus in one simple way of looking at it. It's a positive, inf it's inflammation, which is positive ions. So you just flood the body with negative ions with an uber super structured water that really reduces inflammation in the body and takes away those free radicals, which I do think there's a factor of just, you know, free radicals on the face and whatever the body does age you. So in other words, what I'm saying is it de-ages you. It elevates your consciousness, it de-ages you, it makes you much more concentrated for meditations like you wouldn't believe. Much calmer. It's great for depression too. I mean, that's really what led me to it, even fresh urine. Urine therapy is good for problems of the mind, mental diseases, as well yeah. as physical diseases. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, let's get into so one of the I had this dream last night, actually early, early in the pre-dawn hours this morning, and it was funny. It was a dream about this conversation <laughs> and and in it i was i was kind of laughing because the it sounds like you're we're plugging a supplement <laughs> you know like there was this whole energy in the dream around like we're plugging a supplement we're plugging a supplement we're plugging the supplement and it'll do all these amazing things it's like it's great for enlightenment it's great for blood pressure it's great yeah. for depression <laughs> anxiety it's, great, you know, it's like for all these things and then at the end we're like and guess what like you're pissing it down the drain um, Right. Cause that's sort of the, so it's that's, a mind that's, I think it's that's a mind been fault. one of my bigger, uh, mm -hmm. I think one of my bigger breakthroughs with urine therapy mm -hmm. in, in it, and I think it was accelerated by age for sure. Uh, and by looping is, is the sense, I mean, there's, a, there's a lot in the yogic texts, um, in the, in the, in like the Shiva sutras and then some of the Advaita Vedanta texts around like you're completely self-supported. Like that's the message. Like you, you need nothing. Hmm. Right. And, it, and I, and I think it's an intellectualized idea, but what, what urine does, particularly aged urine does is it, it makes it actually so that it's, it's physiological and that, that shift I mean, I wasn't even thinking about this the last few weeks because my age journey, and I wanted to ask you this, mm. uh, it's salty. And I feel like my body doesn't need that much, like I don't need salt. And so then I think about yeah. the salt wars because salt was traded as a form of currency mm. a few thousand years ago, right? But it seems like the body even can upcycle its own, its own minerals, even salt, right? Mm. And that becomes insanely obvious the more you do age journey, the more you realize like you don't need salt or you need way yeah. less salt that's then isn't a typical diet because if you're putting it back in like your taste for it right it's right. just like oh my gosh all other food starts to taste too salty yeah 
But that's an interesting one, the salt of A. I think there's there's different types of A here, and I'm sure you've experienced it. I mean, in terms of taste, one that's really um hard to drink because it gives you like a pain in I wouldn't say a pain, like a fire water in your throat. I think yeah. those are the ones. It burns. Think, yeah, this is what I don't know. I speculate that um it, it's probably the salt. There's a lot of salt in the it was a lot of salt in a fresh, and when it aged, and it's still good, it just that's the burn, I think, from too much salt, because that resonates with me. However, I get I've just drunk some now that the aged urine salt one with loads of salt and i get benefits from whether my aged urine is tasteless sometimes when i'm clean fasting eating just fruits or when i'm dirty i guess and i've eaten too many salty cooked foods um it seems to just work which is why i my angle for aged urine is um always been for fresh and aged is um because people will ask when can i start um urine therapy um my diet's bad and for me there's no dogma because i started on a bad diet and it worked I, yeah, I don't yeah. really focus on that. I just want people to experience the magic of this stuff. Yeah. Even if they age their urine in plastic, um, it's still okay. It's better than not, uh, you know, doing it. So for me, there's no dogma where you start with these things, whether you have a salty diet or an unsalty diet. Plus, if you go deeper, the more you start with the aged and, and really elevate your consciousness, the more you're likely to change your diet anyway over time because you're starting to experience a different consciousness. So that will change you. Uh, you people need sometimes... Um, a reason but you just got to try it that's how I rolled of it you know that's how you rolled of it you got to be open-minded and try it and don't get attached to um amounts um because any urine's better than no urine aged urine fresh urine and don't get attached to when you drink it just um because it's your body it's always good and especially aged it can never go wrong I basically said yeah so when I mean one of the things I noticed with snorting aged urine and using a, a syringe right? Mm -hmm. The sort of the drinking through the nose. Cause I had, I grew up with a lot of sinus issues, allergy, sinus issues, just a lot, basically just a lot of uh, <laughs> high oxidative stress in terms of my physiology, right? Uh, is it started to clear deeper and deeper levels of the sinus channels and it would burn and burn and burn. And now it doesn't always mm -hmm. burn. Sometimes mm -hmm. burns, sometimes doesn't burn. Uh, and I know that the aged urine can burn mucosal membranes, right? but it doesn't mm. seem to have a harming effect. On anything that's good in the body, no, it's almost like it's organic molecule and anything that's not supposed to be there, it will burn off and it might cause pain, like the tongue. I don't know if you've yeah. done the um, swishing for a long time and had white paste like coming off your tongue. That's a good example. And it gets painful too sometimes to swishing with age, depending on what you've just eaten, your salt on your tongue, uh, diets. So yeah, I, I, I'm... I know that in my heart, like there's, cause people worry too. Oh, can this alkaline ammonia ridden aged urine damage me? No, not really. It doesn't matter how much you do. It does the opposite. It seems to know what's, it's like, it was created by consciousness. So conscious knows not to harm you with the aged and fresh cause it's you um, and it's more powerful. It's, it's a cleanser of everything bad whilst leaving everything good which goes in line with nature. Of course, nature would never create something for you um that is going to harm you that's for you to lift your consciousness is only going to take away the bad so again that's one thing we don't need to know all the fine details of oh it's not doing this it's just it just takes out all the generally all the bad over time mm -hmm. and leaves you the good stuff without harm and damaging you although it might feel like you're being damaged because like you said if you do up the nose or i do the eye drops uh, these always hurt um the old <laughs> eye drops but it doesn't mean it's harming me it's just because it's extremely alkaline and it, the eyes are sensitive. And after I feel great and I have a load of experiences with Asia and eye drops. And same with um, enemas too. It can be paler full of the colon, depending on how level of cleansing, like you're giving birth, like real pain. But it just the rule of that is it literally never does anything bad. I mean, unless you, you've got to subscribe to the theory that detox, sometimes things will get bad to get worse. And if you're really ill, then it may seem like it's doing you harm, but actually it's making you ill to get you better. That's the only way it can do harm, but it's not really. Yeah. yeah. One of the ways that I uh, have experienced it and also because leading hundreds of people through detoxing is it's like when there's, uh, when toxins are trapped, there's often very general symptoms like low energy or uh, just a feeling of malaise or uh, mm. lethargy, lack of inspiration, weight gain, but there's not, it's not acute symptomology like a vicious skin rash or um, puking or uh, diarrhea or something that's like showing acute. But as soon as the toxins get into circulation for removal, right? Or for incineration, right? Like that's when yeah. you have symptomology. 
Yeah, and, and that's because um, a lot of normal people, if we're being honest, what's happening is the toxins are going in and instead of being in the bloodstream, they're going deeper in the body because the person's so toxic. It's actually a good sign when it goes to the bloodstream. It's a good sign when you get a cold yeah. or flu yeah. and serious deal because that may, the way the toxins are going in, the body's like at a level of detox where it can kick it out straight away. The worrying thing is, and maybe with the vaccines too, that they're out now, you might not see immediate symptoms because the toxins are going deep in the body, but they're going to come out at some point 10 times worse than if you had the symptoms straight away. Um, and that's what yeah. aged urine is a kind of factor that pulls out from deep within, especially if you fast with um, fresh urine and especially fast with aged urine, which I haven't got to yet, I'll get around to at some point, that you don't eat any food and then you do the aged urine, you're really going to have a deep detox. Monica talks about this, Kundalini mm -hmm. um, experiences and yeah it's just the most powerful free we're not trying to sell anything i mean how can i make money from it i mean i sell a book that makes i don't know peanuts i don't really care about there's there's no it's more of a passion like when something helps you so much and it can help anybody because everyone goes to the toilet and pees and it gives you a mission because me and you know somewhere along the line we've been taught that I don't know who told me, but urine is a waste product and everyone seems to think it. You ask any random person, 99%, 99.9 will tell you. They don't know where they learned it, but somehow they learned it. So that gives you a mission because when you learn that it's the absolute opposite, then the work begins. You know for you, but it's not enough just to know for you. It's for your friends, your family, people you care about and everyone because everyone can be healthy and not reliant on pharma drugs, um, which at best give do neutral don't really help and at worst cause major problems whereas the aged has been designed by us by consciousness to heal us for free it's not the only thing i use by the way i'm, I'm all over the place i even use really powerful paid supplements but it's a foundation because it's free and everyone pees and everyone has bottles to store it in um yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah the i mean that whole com that whole component of i uh, you know is it because there's questions on the forum, like, is, is the body getting rid of the bad? Um, there's just misconceptions right around what's in your blood. So urine comes from blood plasma, it's ultra plasma filtrate, filtrate, uh, and, and that, you know, even, you know, so, and then waste goes out as far as, um, you know, as far as feces, like a lot of toxins go out through, through feces, but feces is also fermented food and is also mm. should be understood as its own as its own microbiome, because we all know that poop forever has been used as fertilizer, right? Why? Because it's alive. So then right. we start to yeah. enter a totally different experience of the body. And I think what you were just saying too about, you know, the, the, the change that happens when you start to use urine is that all of a sudden it's like you're experiencing yourself in the universe in a, in a, in a, in a maybe a, a more uh, primal, and true relationship that's less that's less productized right mm -hmm. and so the urine is a waste product that mindset that mentality comes is embedded in consumerism so it's embedded in you being a consumer not you being a creator whereas if you think yeah. about it like you as the creator you're creating your urine and so then if we talk about plant medicines or even in ayurveda they'll use metal medicines Right, where you are, they go into alchemy with with both metals and with plants, and, and very long, uh, whatever medicine making processes. If you're upcycling your urine, you're upcycling the medicine you're making, and you're getting that immediate feedback. So you're able to design and in, intuit, and that to me, I think for especially when I look at the results people have with anxiety and depression. And even my sense that in Ayurveda, there's just, there's better words and um, there's better words in different languages for different concepts, right? So Sanskrit had, and, and, um, and some of the other Asian languages have better concepts around consciousness and holistic systems, mm -hmm. how the universe works as a holistic system rather than our Western languages that are very noun verb oriented. They're less like you're an ising and they're more like you're an it. Um, and, and the words are structured that way. So one of the words svasta is, is seated in the self, that you're seated as the self, as the creator in the self. And it seems like that's what you're in re, reminds or changes the mind um, in terms of reminds it back to the natural state uh, that you are the creator. And then because it's an intuitive because you're having an intuitive experience, you have the power of intuition, you steer towards that which is nourishing 
you then pee out some of that nourishment that's coming, that's circulating in your plasma, you upcycle it. So you get feedback. The more you're aging your urine, the more you're doing that in a longer cycle rather than just a, a you know, a hour by hour cycle. Cause you can literally change the taste of your urine in two hours by drinking some coconut water right now. Right. But you can then extend that out and then you can really create the inner vibration you want to experience by collaborating with the ecosystem around you. Yeah. Yeah, like what you said there, like we are um, incredible creations by some divine force. I don't know what to call it. I, you know, it's not belief to me. It's a knowing. And our body is all powerful. And another, and one of the reasons now I love urine therapy is the angle that actually it reminds us that we are all powerful and we don't need to rely on other people to be our own doctors. Because it's funny, we all have this thing that we pee out um, that has incredible powers to it because your body's incredible there's a million processes going in your body now you have no idea your lungs your liver how do people take for granted the heart beating the, the body functions the kidney they're distilling the urine the heart that's vortexing the urine so it becomes structured water the, the, the water distills it the heart makes the water struck the distilled water structured so it makes it more alive so everyone's taking for granted this magical medicine i think it's a deliberate conspiracy um to subjugate the masses and keep them consumers like you said um because if the knowledge of, that everyone had the knowledge we had and everyone tried it and had this actual fact belief that fresh urine is holy medicine and age becomes ridiculous medicine there'll be no self-reliance on other people to take care of your health as much because you'd have a foundation all around the world there wouldn't be people dying for example in africa of uh eating nothing because then they you can urine fast for god knows how long but they don't even those People in Africa don't seem to know the knowledge um, that, um, that urine is amazing and they'll pee out and die. I mean, this is the kind of work, that, the kind of uh, conspiracy and programming that we're dealing with. I mean, another one is swimming pools. What do they tell you in swimming pools? Not to pee um, in a swimming pool. What, in a chlorinated water, which is really bad for you because um, it would clean up. I'm laughing. I had a friend before yeah. and they just basically, they just peed in their hot tub to keep it, you know, basically because it's probiotic. So you get the good bacteria, not the bad bacteria, but yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Right. Like, well, yeah, keep going. And the biggest one is um, for me on urine therapy that, um, that I wasn't, I was sold already because of my own experience, but the actual truth is that without urine, I think me and you and everyone listening to this wouldn't be here. Now, some people might get triggered and not understand. Let's explain. Amniotic fluid is actually comprised mainly of urine. Um, now, listen, the baby, the fetus, when it's in the mum's womb, the first few months doesn't have any kidneys, so it doesn't pee out anything. The mum has kidneys and puts it into the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid doesn't just protect the baby. It, the baby, because um, the baby doesn't poop in the nine months it's in there, so no feces come out, but it does... At first, it's mum urinates into the amniotic fluid and the urine is actually needed. The baby is constantly taking up the nose and the mouth, this urine. It's absolutely essential for the lung development. The baby is constantly surrounded by it, so it's touching its skin. Anything that touches your skin enters your bloodstream and body. So the mum's urine for the first three months is um, touching the baby's skin constantly and sifting into the, the baby's bloodstream and body through the skin. Also, it's inhaling it through the nose. Eventually, after three months, the baby does grow kidneys and then the baby does its own peeing and then the baby does what we call looping i guess its own urine its own fresh slash maybe aged urine i don't know that i don't know if we know that yet but it's definitely fresh and probably a little bit aged too so the baby's doing urine therapy what i'm saying is uh, this is a reason why uh, babies have baby soft skin every baby funny enough doesn't matter if it's got any issues when it comes out autism it has baby soft skin there's only one reason why a baby has baby soft skin as soon as it comes out it's because it's surrounded by urine which other people tell us is a waste product how ridiculous is that like, well then we put urea in skincare products right <laughs> right and urea is the reason why when we do age urine rubs somehow it seems to go into the skin like no other water it seems to absorb so smoothly like it was meant to Funny that. yeah yeah and there's in the chat there's some you know just questions about you know why why do we pee it out if the body uh, wouldn't retain it hmm. I, the way that i understand this it, it's the it, like when I was drawing it out for, for the wild habits book, it's the water cycle. It's the water cycle. It's like the, it, everything's moving in cycles. Everything's moving in cycles, right? Everything. So it's like, it, it, it rains. So where did the rain come from? Well, the rain came from the clouds. So where did the clouds get the moisture? Well, the clouds got the moisture from the ocean. Where did the ocean get the moisture? Well, because when it rained, <laughs> it went into rivers, you know, like little streams into rivers and back into the ocean. And it's like, it, it, we are cyclical. We are cyclical systems. It's been trained out of us. You know, the more yeah. we're on 
we live in a culture that doesn't doesn't really get cycles, right? Even if we look at how most, um, you know, the world I feel like right now is more or less run by corporations and corporations don't, they don't move cyclically. They want, they want month over month growth, 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 growth. Well, nature doesn't work that way. Like nature works that there's a time of, there's a fallow time, right? Before there's a moisture time where then there's sprouting and then there's maturation and then in maturation, it goes into seeding into latency. And then it, the process begins again. And we knew this, like we do know this. Uh, I think one of the other things, it's interesting, those of you who are into Ayurveda, start to look into cow urine. Because I, from what I can tell, I mean, Ayurveda has survived thousands of years um, in, in, in that it's, it's survived, if you look at it, it's survived at least a few dozen political regimes. And what happens with politics is certain things become into vogue and certain things come out of vogue. We can see that right now, right? Where there's a massive division around the planet around whether a person should be vaccinated or whether a person has a choice around, around um, pharmaceutical use. And, and we can look that there's um, applications of disgust, right? So that like a lot of, a lot of people who are vaccinated think that anti-vaxxers are, they, they really do think that they're, that they're disgusting, that they're immoral, that it's, that they're spreading germs, right? So it's very, very high. Vaccine theory is very high in germ theory, not on, on terrain theory. Mm. And if we look at Ayurveda, it's gone through similar, uh, it's gone through this process before, right? Like the vaccine debate isn't the first debate. Uh, so, you know, when I look at the, the, like right now, currently in India, mm. Cow urine supplements are sold, tons of them, lots of them. It's a very, very popular supplement. Didn't know cow, about urine. cow urine supplements, did you say? Cow urine supplements. So huh. why? Why did, because they knew, right? Because if we look at these ancient texts, it's in the Ayurvedic texts, right? No question that it's there. It's no yeah. question that we knew this. Right? Anyone Google Shivabu Kalpa? That's interesting. Shivabu Kalpa is the one. Google and it. so, right? And so, that, so yeah, Shivabu Kalpa. Right. And, and some other ones as well. If we, th there's a lot of urine therapy in our Ayurvedic text, but we look at it and what happens is like at some point in history, it seems like, and I would love if anyone has, if anyone has information on this, please share it with me. Uh, it seems like it just became out of vogue to ingest your own urine. Like at some point it was like, no. And we mm -hmm. went to the productized cow urine. And then we learned how to dry cow urine and to pack it into pills. Right. So that's a little bit of an evolution of, of so it, I, this morning, it was funny when I was, I was doing my aged urine massage, which I do every morning. I find my body yeah. craves it, right? And I, I'd like for you to talk about that too, the intuitive path and how the how body needs the, the body. Then? Just get out of it crusty because it does smell um, to be watching this. Uh, the aged urine massaging most of the time uh, after a few hours afterwards, right? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know. My family's gotten used to it. I don't, I've. I work in my office mostly alone in the day. I don't know, but my dog loves it. Right. And this is another mm. affirmation of it. Like, cause dogs will sniff things and they'll mm. lick things that it, what I find in general is dog licks thing, licks that, which is strong in micro microbial activity. They love sharing mm. microbiomes, right? They sniff each other's butt, they lick each other's mouth is, and then mm. they come and they put, they lick you on the skin. So you're getting, and they've actually, yeah proven that people that have pets have stronger microbiome, stronger immune defense than people that don't have mm. pets because yeah. the pet's doing such a good job of mixing all the, all the microbes around all yeah. the good bacteria around. So when I see that, you know, it's like humans were using cow urine. Uh, dogs are obviously using human urine. If my dog's any example, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, I've heard many people say that dogs love age urine. You're not the only person. Yeah. Love the smell and lick of it. Yeah, they love it. Why? Because it's packed with it's it's packed with good bacteria, and they're operating. Yeah, well, they haven't got programmed, have they, to say that it's bad? They just know from experience, and they go for it. <laughs> they know. <laughs> they know exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, as far as I can tell, I don't know. You know, as far as um, anyone that has is like curious whether or not your urine is bad for you, I think just going back to what Harry said earlier, of like you have to try it to know. Like no one's ever going to convince you of it. And, it, it, and it's not about that. Like no one's trying to sell you anything. Like no one's even trying to sell you on the idea of this. We're just trying to have a conversation about two people who use this, right? And what, and what we're experiencing. I came to it from the path of Ayurveda and yoga and being a teacher for 20 years. And this is where I've landed. You came to it because you had what you had depression and you read Martha Christie's book. 
correct. I read your own perfect medicine, which is an amazing book, guys. On top of mind, the your Bath Christie's ones are amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what started to happen for you on that? Like what were, if you go back to the beginning, because a lot of people mm-hmm. who are listening are going to come back to, to mm-hmm. the beginning. Right. So this would have been um, 2016. I've always been open minded. That was a big one. And I was always reading books. And I saw on Amazon uh, a book with like 50 reviews at the time, I think, which is a lot. Five star. And it was called Your Own Perfect Medicine. I had my Mark Christie, you just mentioned. I had no clue that it was your. It just came up in your search. Kind of. You know, when you buy something, it says other items buy. And what I do is I always go for the high numbered one. So it's got 50 and it's got five stars. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. So it came to my ha- came to my house, and I remember going to a park in Birmingham. It was a short book, Mark Christie's. I read it in a couple of hours in a park, and I was like, "Oh, there's a lot of science that's been suppressed on why your fresh urine only is got the most magical ingredients in it." So I was like, "Well, I'm very excited. I'm going to try this." And I I know what people are thinking. Some people are be like, "Yeah, did you placebo it?" Oh, it was far more placebo than when I tried it. Um, two things I tried. I tried uh, rubbing it on my stomach. And that was the most magical experience, fresh urine, um, having never had this powerful water. And second, I've drank my first in the morning, I think, the next day, a little bit, not even a lot. And um, I knew that my life would never be the same again. And I kept saying that because the level of consciousness that I was currently at experiencing in terms of my physical health and yeah. mental health, I didn't know I had depression. It just removed this, it removed another level of depression. So you didn't, didn't know you had, I think this is really worth <laughs> highlighting. Like it was in retrospect that you realized that your system was depressed. Correct. Yeah, I done, done a lot of work at this point. I've been 10 years in self-improvement. So I didn't have depression in terms of um, seeing the world wrong. I corrected that. But I had depression in terms of toxins in my body, um, that kind of depression. So when I, the, I took the fresh urine, it re- instantly removed a load of toxins in my brain and body. And that was a, such a sharp contrast yeah, to the yeah. tap water that I was on in the depression. I was like, whoa. And then I got super excited because I thought, not only is this a new level of consciousness I've never experienced before, but I can tap into it again and again because it's free. I didn't have a load of money at the time. Still don't now. So I was like, yes, this is free and amazing. This is, I kind of knew intuitively it was going to be my mission, a huge part of my mission. And so it turns out because I'm speaking to you now, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bought, I just posted the link. Someone asked, so your own perfect medicine. It's by Martha Christie. This is interesting. It's currently out of stock, which means that I'm thinking we're sort of at a tipping point in, at least in, in the, uh, what Malcolm Gladwell, what does he call them? The, um, the mavens, like enough, enough people are that have influence are starting to talk about this, which is great. Cause that's the, in his book, the tipping point, he kind of shows like you need people that have followings to talk about something in order for, for something to tip for an idea to tip. So anyone who's listening right now, just know that like, whether you're going to do this or not, just even you being informed that it exists, just knowing that people are doing this, just being somewhat aware, even of that Indians are drying cow urine and taking <laughs> supplements like to thin their blood and deal with cardiovascular disease. Like it's worth, you know, it's worth being, it's worth being in, it's worth being in the know. And there's going to be a lot more books on urine medicine uh, and urine therapy coming out. Gotcha. Yeah. There's also one here. I'll plug my own books in. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it's your cheeky. It's Age Urine Discovery Century. Still to this day, no one's written a book only on Age Urine. I really want people to step up. For now, this is good enough. This has got um, the, my opinions, the science and how to take it, number one and two. I'm working on number three and I'll keep writing them because it's a level above the fresh urine and it's just becoming more popular, Kate. I've noticed um, it's my most popular book. And it's got a load of reviews on Amazon. I didn't ask anyone. I don't ever ask people for reviews anymore. It's just organic because people recognize when they try this and open-minded. Oh my God. They're so grateful to you because there's the book. There's the information. Now they're being exposed to it. And then most of all, they try it for themselves, sit it in a bottle for a couple of weeks, one week, two weeks, compare it to their fresh urine and their aged urine. Everyone notices a huge difference, a jump up and they love it. And then it becomes like a lifestyle. It doesn't become just something for most people they tried and said oh it wasn't for me it worked for a... most people that try it tend to stick with it and uh, for good reason it really elevates the consciousness what you know i just want to i want to a little bit play devil's advocate because i i bought martha christie's book in 2002 according to my amazon account i uh, i read it i tried it but i didn't know anyone else doing it and i didn't really get it because of that. And it seems like 20 years later, it's really different, right? Because a lot of people are using it. But the other thing is there's a rise in, in urine therapy forums, right? So like on Facebook, you have a forum, 
We have our wild habits challenge form where we're having this conversation. Uh, uh, Brother Sage has his forum over on Mighty Networks, right? There's maybe three or four fairly popular urine therapy Facebook groups that are all free. Uh, and they have, some of them, you guys have a ton of resources and PDFs and, and uh, conglomerations of research um, that's super helpful to, to have. And I've even seen a PDF of Martha Christie's book in one of them under the resources and in one of the free Facebook groups. And to me, this really speaks to that, like to, for a habit to gain hold, and this might be more true for women than men. I'll just say that from the front because women are more communal and men go it alone more. Uh, is, is have, knowing other people doing it can be that which makes something from, I've tried it, I know a little bit about it, to I'm, I'm using it, I'm doing it. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. That's the story of me. Because um, when I first discovered it, I went on Facebook groups and I was like, I have to share this information. I had to find out more information. And where I came to is the groups that you've seen um, and urine therapy typed it on groups, thousands of people on the group. And all I did at the beginning was learn, experience, share mostly just sit quietly and watch other people and learn and then um eventually I thought well I've got information to share because now I'm years into this and yeah it's, it's it was a sense of community is what I'm saying that uh, of people that were similar to me yes they were faceless and online but actually it was more real because I was having the same experience as me that motivated me to keep going with it because I knew my truth on it but I didn't want to be alone in my truth I want other people the well, my tribe that were doing it similarly and practicing it um, online because you think you're crazy, especially at the beginning when you have these experiences. You know, your entire life you've been told it's a complete. It's like well, and if you don't think you're crazy, the people around you think you're crazy. So there's that. Right, because the, the whole life, um, everyone's been telling you one thing, and it could be an opening to an awakening. You're in therapy, it could be your opening for your own experience. Because if everyone's telling you something, and your experience at the beginning tells you, "Oh my God." that you have to stop it leads you to questioning well what other lies yeah. has the system got and um, i mean me and you and i'm sure other people watching this know there is a the system is set up as at the highest level um the biggest lies they don't tell us lies on the small things the big things that matter are all lies and opposites and this urine therapy is one of the biggest lies out there and it's deliberate to keep us abreast especially in these times because it can really help with uh, whether you believe COVID is real or not it really can help I'm not saying cure it I don't know but it can really help um keep people alive and thriving in these mad times yeah I mean and I can explain a little bit I know there's a lot of questions with COVID and in urine therapy and from uh from what I can tell it comes down to you know again how much oxidative stress someone has and again you can measure that in terms of allostatic load that's the term that's used if someone has chronic allostatic load and they come across a new virus because the body's already dealing with chronic inflammation uh, that means that it can't it can't just quickly assimilate um, the new genetic information from the new virus or bacteria and that's basically how the body evolves is it it assimilates information uh, and, and it gets to know it gets to know the evolving potential. This is the new viral evolving potential or bacterial or fungal evolving potential, which is so much greater than the human genome, which is so tiny, right? Compared to the bacterial genome, compared to the viral genome, which is called dark matter. We don't know. It's so, it's so big. So the more load on the system, the less adaptability, right? And that also means that because there's already a load on the system, it's the tipping point. It's the thing that's going to bring it over, it's gonna, it's, it's like the one more factor that's already gonna take the body down. So that we know that in terms of the stats on comorbidities, we know that in terms of the stats on obesity with, um, with how, how sick someone gets from a virus or from, um, or from a bacteria. So if you keep your, if you, you know, if you keep your um, allostatic load really low and you're in therapy, you'll do that, right? It's gonna, it's gonna have a, an ox, that whole oxidation reduction potential, that ORP you're saying, with what we know from the ORP meters is like age urines ORPs through the roof. It's, you know, it goes to negative 200. It's insane. So what it's doing is it's pulling, it's pulling that chronic inflammation out of the physiology, but it's also nourishing. This is where it's so fascinating is it's nourishing the microbiomes of the body to actually, and the microbiomes are what are creating uh, homeostasis within the physiology as opposed to allostasis. Right. And so with with that, and this is where I think it gets really interesting with with the with with the viral loads um, and and transmitting viruses. Even is like if if you were to get a, a new virus, a new cutting edge virus that um, that your body hadn't adapted to yet, and you had a low allostatic load because you lead an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, um, you're 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 
using positive stressors in your life or habits that are hard to do, but make you better, smarter, more thriving, uh, you know, more oxygenated, uh, more relaxed as opposed to negative stressors, which do the like opposite drinking aged urine. Aged urine's a good one. Yeah. Right. Aged urine's a good one. So then, <laughs> so then what happens is your, your body comes in co- contact with the virus, the virus starts replicating and that replication shows up in your blood. So it's going to show up in your urine. It's going to show up in your feces because the virus is also replicating in the colon um, as well. And in this, in this, in the mouth and in the sinuses is you start upcycling and the, what's so, so fascinating about this. So say you do upcycle by doing urine enemas or upcycle by snorting aged urine, you're nourishing the microbiome. So then the microbiome is more quickly to adapt to the new genetic information. Right? Yeah, I like so that. You, you yeah. get this hyper adaptability. And what's so fascinating to me about that is it's, this is terrain, you guys, this is terrain theory, terrain theory 101. Make the terrain, the terrain is the microbiome and how the microbiome optimizes your human genome. So how the microbiome makes the human cells healthier is, is from the microbiome cells, right? That's the terrain. Keep the microbiomes healthy and bam, you have adaptability. So it's not about fighting germs. It's about healthy terrain and that germs seek unhealthy terrain, right? Right. So yeah. drugs cause dysbiosis and it doesn't matter if it's an antidepressant drug, if it's ibuprofen, if it's a vaccine, you guys can do all the research on this. Like I have, it's all right there for you. Pharmaceuticals cause dysbiosis, meaning that kills your, it kills the terrain. Yeah. The good bacteria in your gut. Yeah. And everywhere. Yeah. And everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. And the viruses, because- which are good too. Like we have such a, we're so confused on that. Mm. Oh. So yeah. in terms of, <laughs> I was interviewing, uh, this will come out this week, you guys, Emerin Mayer, who's doc, Dr. Mayer is the, he just wrote the, the gut immune connection. He also wrote the gut brain connection. He's like one of the head researchers in the world on microbiome. And I asked him about, and he's European. So he, he's from Germany. So he's actually, even though he's lived in America for 40 years, he's very, uh, I find Europeans are a lot more open-minded than, um, than American doctors on this sort of stuff. So I asked him straight off. I'm like, do you know anything about urine therapy or about using upcycling mm. urine? And he was like, he looked at me like, mm. and he's like thinking of all the research. Cause this guy, mm. he runs a lab at UCLA, right? Like he's got, mm. he's got access to funding. Mm. He can run studies that he wants to run. And he said, he remembered this one study and they never really figured it out. And it was like, I think it was 10, 20 years ago. And it was on uh, mice that had, it was on, uh, on what are they called? What are, m- mice that have babies. And the mother, pop, mother mice was licking the urines uh, out of the pups. Mm. There was someone asked you about, about, uh, <laughs> about pregnancy and, and upcycling urine. So what we, so it, what he found with that was that by watching what happens postpartum with these mice moms is that they rehydrate. Yeah. So they were showing that their electrolyte, like their electrolyte skyrocketed yeah. from upcycling their urines, pups, uh, pups urine. Wow. And that was the yeah. only thing he knew about it was that yeah. it was like, well, it seems to rehydrate them. It seems to make them healthier. It seems to increase electrolytes, but we don't, but we haven't run a study on it. Oh, and he's the microbiome guy. Right. Yeah. As far as I can tell, the more you get into urine therapy, like in the research of it, the more you're going to get interested in the microbiomes. Yeah. In the microbiomes of the body. It is fascinating. My bias is that um, only because I'm a little person and I, I've not got any degrees, I failed university twice. Um, the studies, I mean, I, I, I do, if we wait for studies for these things that are never going to come because guess what most of the studies are funded by pharma and the ones that aren't there's just none coming up for the since the 40s that martha christie's was the last um, official studies in the 40s so there's no studies almost um since then of urine being amazing yeah it has which this should raise eyebrows in itself right like why are there no aged urine i mean there's barely any studies on urine i mean the canadian your um urine metabolome has the best breakdown of all the things that are in urine which is that's a fun website um especially if you're into chemistry but like beyond that there's no age urine. i can't find a single age urine study right so what so what's the benefit of these co- these um universities what's the profits basically in them doing these studies on urine therapy where's the money to be made is one angle of looking at it but 
second angle is um, it's going too deep and touching too raw in waking people up because it's like there's a resurgence now with psychedelic studies coming out, but there's yeah. still none yeah. on urine. We're, we're a little bit behind. And yet we're not behind because I know from uh, by book sales and from urine therapy groups and your groups um, that urine is actually kicking off aged urine, fresh urine, despite the fact that still to this day, there seems to be almost no progress um, with the studies because actually anecdotal evidence on aged urine rules the wave it seems like everyone has amazing experiences with aged urine or fresh urine so that's what we're relying on um, but in the future i'd love it if um you know if we all collaborated and paid scientists but i think i don't know maybe it's too risky at this moment in time maybe they'll get killed or scared i don't know i like i mean i like to i'm less of a conspiracy theorist like uh, you know us versus them and i and i think you in pointing to the psychedelic research you're you're I think that's a good model. I think that's dead on where it's like a government, you know, government stopped all, all research, um, but it didn't last, you know, it only stopped from what, 1960 to 2012 or something, 2015. And now it's mm. back. And now we're yeah, seeing yeah. even legalization of, of psilocybin in, in certain, in certain yeah. states for, for, um, for residential growth, right. Where you can make your own, you can grow your own. So that's, uh, it's hopeful. And I even wonder, you know, if, I mean, when, when you talk to any doctor, they're looking at urine under a microscope all the time. Like they understand that they can see into the blood through looking at urine, right? Cause that's what they're constantly doing. So they're trying to get a sense of like, they're, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who works in an ER clinic, right? And like, she's wondering what's going on. She looks under the microscope at the person's urine, right? Like what exactly is going on? So we have doctors doing that all over the place. I think even raising the awareness, like that to me is the question, how do we raise a, awareness that mm -hmm. as mm -hmm urine ages. And I think the ORP uh, measure is probably the best because one, because it's easy. Yes. Yep. Um, alkalinity is easy too. the pH, um, you know, to go down that route. I think one thing that's, that's easy too is to get a nice um, quality microscope and look under the microscope, take a drop of your age, put it under the microscope and see the structure. You can do loads of experiments, for example, um, an unhealthy person's normal blood. And then um, this I'll get to some point. I hope other people will too. Um, after drinking before basically take a client's blood before age during drinking or taking it in somehow and after you'll see a huge difference on the mic so these are things i know people are passionate about that are working on behind the scenes um maybe mm -hmm. there are there is information but we need it to go a little bit more mainstream like psychedelic research you said is going a bit more mainstream i think it's going to happen because i can see that urine therapy is really kick it off interest in it has been um i don't know since the 40s and armstrong john w armstrong's water of life another great book uh, i think around the world there's actually a, a shocking amount of people uh, i think brother sage is big on the numbers uh, millions i think of the billion people there's millions of us um but i guess compared to the normal it seems disparate and we're all spotted around which is why we come together in groups like this but there are communities in around the world and in vegan communities in the tropics all over the place non-vegan communities in the tropics too that are, are literally all doing aged urine or fresh urine and i love it especially the age i love it when people really know about this stuff and they learn these people from people like me and you watching videos and i say oh yeah i recognize you you helped me along the journey it was your videos on aged urine that you talked about in this interview for example that um, got me going and i was like yeah that's what it's about it's about sharing our experience because i'm not waiting oh i'm not waiting for studies um i hope they'll come but that's not in my power at the moment so if in the meantime me and you will talk about it talk yeah yeah well and i think if we point to the potential like yeah this happened with this happened with psilocybin it's another naturally occurring substance on the planet that was made illegal that's now found to be insanely therapeutic uh let's follow let's follow that model and see if we can yeah. get studies to the I'm wondering when they're well. going to say that um, urine is a class A drug. Don't ever drink it. Right. <laughs> totally. Well, it's close. I mean, it's close. I mean, yeah, you guys can all who are listening, just go ahead and go into Google. Don't use another search engine. Use Google. And you can see how commercialized a search engine is from the results that you're going to get. So go into Google and type in, you can even type in um, urine therapy or drinking your urine and see, see what you get. Cause in general, my guess is you're going to find urine as a waste project, you know, pro product never ingested. Um, and that just kind of shows you, I, I would say it shows me the state of Google's information um, on health in general, right? If you, cause if you use another search engine like um, Ecosia, E-C-O-A-S-I-A, um, which is a cool search engine that donates, they basically, every search you do, they give like a penny to cleaning up oceans. It's really cool. Which one's that? Ecosia does a tree. Ecosia, E-C-O. Oh, I did before they did the trees, not, okay. Oh, the trees. 
trees, yeah. yeah. They plant trees, isn't it? Yeah. They plant trees, right, thanks, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting and you get different information. So it's like, to some degree, it's like, where are we, where are we getting information from? Mm. Okay, so but lastly, I just want to go back to the spiritual and like why it shows up in spiritual texts like the Buddhist um, Pali Canon and in and, and the Shivan Bukalpa, uh, why we see it in these lineages that were really focused on whole person, um, awake person, highly, you know, yourself as consciousness. Uh, so from cultures that are anti-materialistic in general, that looked for a, a deeper meaning in life rather than an accumulation of wealth. If we remember, Buddha was the, the son of a king, right? Mm. And he did not want power, right? He, he wanted wisdom. So he went for wisdom over power. Um, same thing if we look at Shivambu Kalpa, the, the Shiva, the mythic figure of Shiva represents the same thing, someone who, who prizes wisdom over, um, over money. So with... With age during, there's a lot of sort of talk in user groups, um, citizen data mm. user groups around the decalcification of the pineal gland mm. and the circulation mm. of endogenous DMT that you actually can, you become a visionary of your life um, and, of, and of a future. And, the, and we could see in the beginning, like back to the concept of sfasta, you get seated in yourself as the, as the creative power of the universe. So any, so I guess I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's amazing what you just said there. There's so many angles. Um, yeah, so the, the cows, I mean, I believe that uh, a lot of people have, including myself, have had in the past a calcified pineal, which is almost like the spiritual center right deeper in the body there. It's part of the awakening process and part of the deal, I think, why they put fluoride in the water, why we're bombarded by heavy metals in the air, while there's so much materialism going on, because the more materialism, the more toxins and factories that, reduce increase the air so there's no um getting away from some kind of calcification of the pineal which is why we've got to use tools that seem to decalcify the pineal as fast as possible some do it slowly i think diet's cool but sometimes it can be quite a slow process it's very worthy though and then some things really decalcify the pineal very quickly and nothing to me more than the age you're in because I mean, as soon as you eat or drink something, I think the pineal has the most blood per unit. It goes straight to the pineal, basically. So that includes bad food, bad drink, but also on the flip side, aged urine, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so it does. Once this gets de decalcified, you start waking up. You start experiencing your superpowers. Um, you know, it's a journey. It doesn't happen tomorrow. And you start growing it, too. I think it gets calcified and first it gets atrophied over time. So you can regrow it to its former size. I think it was actually quite big. And yeah, the aged is a great weapon for um, decalcification pineal. And also, it definitely does have DMT in it because it has everything. Your body, you produce DMT at nighttime all the time when you do breath work, when you sleep at night. That's how you remember your dreams. Every time you're dreaming, you're producing DMT. When you do the eye drops, wow, this makes me, uh, gives me DMT highs of sorts and especially if you fast with it oh my god so yeah your, your body is producing dmt all the time anything good that your body is inside your body comes out of the urine that does include dmd endogenous so when you recycle you're you're using something that you've already used with the dmt again and dmt is the god molecule it's tied into the pineal it's what um it's our spirit it's a different side to us than the physical it's a manifestation of the invisible and of another reality that we get to experience here so with age you're in, you really can experience other realities you can experience dmt highs you can experience um yeah all kinds of magic decalcification of the pineal it will happen automatically by the way when you start urine therapy you don't have to think okay so when's it going to decalcify my pineal it happens from dot one on these therapies and then it's a process of because it might be very calcified it might take a couple of months or years to decalcify fully and then you regrow it um, just as sun gazing uh, increases the, they found sun gazers the pineal is increased inside not just decalcified uh, looking at the sun uh, it's very obvious to me and i'm looking forward to studies on this in the future will no doubt come out it, there's going to be studies about people that were on aged urine particularly um over many years and they'll examine their pineals and it's very obvious to me that their pineals will be way bigger than normal people's just from the, fa the fact they were doing aged urine it regrows the pineal and doesn't just decalcify it and then when this is regrown well that's where it come back to high consciousness superpowers um, yeah. Yeah. amazing because you see i mean i i hear it in the people that i've interviewed that have done more aged urine is is there's a a real sense of freedom of spirit there's a real sense of of not not being entrenched in the material plane, like having access to it, right? Do what you want with it, but not, but not, and also not living from a place of uh, what I call existential fear, 
-hmm. right? Where it's like, right. right? Where like, and that again, goes back to that word svasta. Like when you're truly seated in the self, there's no, there's not an existential level of fear and anxiety. Do I have enough money? Do I have enough this, that? Like I need more and more and more, right? It's yeah. like, that's all, or what, and even at like the teenage level might be more friends, right? It's like, it's all gone. It's, it's this awake, accessible present presence yeah. that's able to vision yeah. into the future and create and co-create and collaborate in into the next reality yeah I, one way of looking at it, Adrian, i definitely know i'm sure you've experienced this it, when you take it in however way um it slows the breath down like i notice this straight away like you wouldn't believe now i think um we're here in duality and when we get stressed our breath speeds up and i think overall if you're unhealthy the unhealthy you are the faster your resting breath per minute is now yes. when you take age urine what it does is it's super slow it's so obvious it's super slowing your breath down and the more you slow your breath down the more you're escaping duality the highs and lows and the more you're drawing to what the buddha calls a state of uh, samadhi uh, one consciousness you're drawing your consciousness from a state of fight or flight of uh, mm -hmm. a victim to what's happening to you to a nice peaceful calm due to the breath slowdown when the breath slows down the body naturally produces more dmt so then it comes out in the pee more it's all linked and yeah, one of the keys to health is a slower breath. And this aged urine really calms you down. So it's a great uh, shield of armor for life because we all get stressed here in reality, in duality. But it, this one, yeah, is, this is another reason why I think it's Samadhi. It's the Buddha enlightenment. It really slows you down. It makes that concentration perfection for a deep meditation. It's very, very powerful. The yogis <laughs> measure a lifetime in breath. So that... Yes, right. and then, so and if then you if you just if slow you take your breath down, you it every day. Yeah, Sorry, go so ahead. breath. Yeah, so breath breath work I've noticed slows the breath down, but it's temporary. I mean, I don't want to judge. If I'm comparing breath work versus aged urine uh, drinking, I always notice a much longer slow breath effect lasting many hours and even up to 24 hours, depending how much I've eaten from just the little swishing or a little bit of drinking of aged urine. It really does stay in your system for a long time. And like you said, yes, the amount of breaths you take uh, is almost directly correlated to how long you're going to live and how healthy you're going to be. So by that factor, and I know, and you know that aged urine really slows the breath down to an obvious level, but it makes sense that, well, you're just going to live longer as well as happier um, involving yourself with the process of aged urine. So one of the things I, I started to do is just keep a water bottle uh, in my, on my I bike a lot, snow bike in the winter and, and mountain bike in the summer, do a little road biking. And I just would have my aged urine water bottle with me so that when, <laughs> yeah, <that's nice. laughs> so, well, and this is one of the things that I noticed because I noticed swishing and I know some people are going to like, are like, oh my God, it tastes so gross. Why would I want to swish it? But something changes in your palate. So one of the concepts in Ayurveda that um, any Ayurvedic practitioner knows is that taste is relative, meaning what tastes good is relative to what you've been eating lately. So the more you, you change what you're eating, the more that relativity changes. So if you eat junk food, you crave junk food. If you eat healthy food, junk food tastes like junk, right? Yeah. So with the aged urine, what I noticed in swishing it while biking, so under right heart, like just massive load in terms of positive stress or load on my, on my um, massive oxygen demand, mountain biking up a hill, um, mm. swishing is first of all, it forces nasal breathing because you can't breathe through your mouth if there's stuff in your mouth. But the oh, other thing it starts to do is, is the off gassing into the mm. sinuses and parasinuses. Mm. And this is also where there's a whole microbiome in the parasinuses. So it starts to feed the microbiome, opening more oxygen absorption into my parasinuses, into the lungs, right? And then, and then throughout my physiology. So I started to notice I would crave it. But the other thing I would notice is that it would get rid of any biofilm. So if there was any mucus, hmm. any like sticky, even sticky, thin, clear, mucus, it comes out. And that biofilm is where bad bacteria breed. You guys just Google biofilm and, and you'll find that it's, it becomes its own living network. Um, it, it's not always dysfunctional either. It can organize bad bacteria out of the body. It's the way the body collects stuff to be like, let's huck a loogie. Let's huck, let's, let's huck all of this on out. But in terms of places for people to start, like I would start with swishing, even swishing diluted aged urine with some, some fresh or some water. Uh, or rubbing a little bit on 
on, you know, bottoms of the feet or backs of the wrist, back of the neck. I mean, the tummy, yeah. Whatever face, if you're, um, if you're a woman and you uh, care about looking as young as possible, which I guess a lot of women do, and that's cool, um, rub it on your skin and watch your face glow. Amazing. Uh, just fresh. And then age is another level, isn't it? Right? You look yeah. young forever. Jesus. And then with age, I mean, also to me, enemas were pretty easy, although maybe the first few kind of burned a little bit. Any advice on that for people who want to? Yeah, diluting. Um, don't go straight for the hardcore, especially if you're new to this. Um, if you're new to this, uh, be careful because you could freak yourself out and have a painful burn. Although you'll survive the burn and it'll be OK. You'll just poo straight away. You don't need to go to the toilet. But yeah, dilute it down um, for enemas because I remember that feeling, too of like being in pain, childbirth. I mean, I guess what childbirth, a mild form of childbirth. When you're I wouldn't go that far, but. You know. <laughs> yeah, hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But another funny thing is um, about the taste. And when people say it's disgusting, and I know a lot of people watching this, like you just already said, think it's disgusting. But actually the word disgusting, the taste, it's never as bad, honestly, guys, it's never as bad taste or smell as you think it's going to be. And second, all that is, is a programming reaction. So understand that you've just been programmed at that point. It's not actually you. And third, once you experience it, um, your mind starts recalibrating from, oh, this is disgusting to, oh my God, but it gives me, it makes me feel so, uh, I'll say effing good. I say the word, it makes you feel so good. Um, when you do it and then becomes an addiction um, in, in a good way to your highest vibration because it changes you and you'll start a process of actually this is really amazing and it's not a little shift because sometimes little shifts in consciousness they're hard to stick to these hard habits but when something really changes your conversation consciousness a lot like age you're in that's when you really commit and like how can I because I can't imagine now a 34 um ever stopping i don't do it every day all the time but i'm saying i can't imagine giving it up i've got age yeah. yeah. all the time um, i'm always doing it especially when i need it and i get lazy yeah I, I can't imagine my life without it to me now in my life and i've got friends that do it too it's normal it's become not weird it's just a normal part of my life and no one can tell me that it it's um waste uh, without me I don't get triggered by it anymore I just think you don't understand and yeah. maybe yeah. I won't argue with you because you're not ready for it I, I won't waste my energy because I know my truth I don't need to defend the truth right. no one right. does. yeah well said and I and I I think that's a common experience with it is is it becomes like water right and that's why Armstrong called it the waters of life it becomes like oh I, I would never want to live without it I always you know it's funny how the Chinese government you guys can look this up if you want, but I think it was in 2017, the Chinese government outlawed urine therapy. They're like, you can't, yeah, they made wow. it illegal. It's hilarious. It's the funniest. That's still article. applying today then, Kate? Is that still I don't the, know. Uh, I don't know where ridiculous. it's at today. Um, it had, basically it was gaining in popularity in Hong Kong and like around 2017, like urine therapy was, you know, spreading like wildfire. Um, in the Chinese government being what it is, uh, was <laughs> wanted to put an end to self-empowerment. Um, but to me, anything that becomes illegal, right? Like why? Like why? Because there's a power there, right? There's yeah, and a, how can you actually make it illegal for someone? Oh, it's hilarious. It. Like, you can go to the you bathroom. Can't, can't, you can't enforce it, can you? How can you, you enforce can't. that? But, but what it brings up to me is exactly what you said, is there's a sense when you've been using it that, that they're like, I would never give this up or I would never want to live without this. Like that would, that would lower my quality of life. And I know a lot of people experience that with yoga and with meditation of like this, yeah. like my life without this would be, would happen on a different order, level of order would happen on a lower order. Yeah. And there's that experience with the urine of like, this is, this is raising this is raising my experience. It changes your order. thoughts, your frequency. And when something radically like yoga, meditation, they change your frequency so much, your thoughts change. You become more positive. You become more caring. You um, soften that ego that we all have that we need. Um, you become more compassionate. You become more in your mission. You become more determined. You become more of all the traits, of your personality that you love. You become more of it when you find something so powerful like the age. And like you said, it's not the only thing. There's yoga, meditation, and a load other. But imagine doing all of them. Why are we just doing yoga? Yeah. You could do well, and yoga. Yeah, you can double your power. I mean, I think we all came here to um, raise our vibration as fast as possible, as much as possible um, in this incarnation, especially in these times. And I just found it one of the best ways. It's not the only thing I do. I do loads of things, but yeah. Yeah. it's going to be one of my favorites for sure. It is so powerful. So have you found, um, lastly, just last question, I promise. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you notice that you need less food? 
Yeah, so I have noticed, and a lot of people notice, I, th- I think, I, I know it, it's the uber super structured water, it hydrates the cells. When the cells and the body, I mean, the cells are the body, when the body's really hydrated, um, liquid, because we're mostly 99% liquid, I think, water, when that's really hydrated, you don't really need food as much. There's no desire. Plus, there's so much oxygen and negative ions in your system that I think food is like a replacement, like to give us oxygen and all this stuff. It's uh, it's a secondary thing. So, yes, you can still can eat, but you'll find your hunger will dissipate over time. Now, I still eat. Don't get me wrong. Um, I fast every now and again, too. I enjoy eating food. Um, but yes, it does. It really does um, hydrate you. And when you're hydrated, you need less food. That's what I think. Yeah. And it's a deeper... It's a deeper level of hydration because of the structured water it brings us back to the beginning. Yeah, because like people always want to eat and it's because of, uh, I think, parasites and, and the, the habitual pattern of thinking they need free food today means that there's some craving for it. But as soon as you start with age urine, you'll notice that craving for food and the patterns starts to go, oh, I don't, there's nothing in my tummy set making me feel like I need to eat as much. So yes, absolutely. It's a great weapon and tool for what I think is a problem in society of people eating too much food all the time and snacking, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I just wrote a book on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, quickly, I love your, I, I saw a chapter, but I haven't got it yet. I'm receiving it about um, eating late at night. I like that bit. There was a bit about don't eat late at night. Um, Cause then oh, it's, yeah. it's important. It helps with digest. It's important time to rest at night time and to eat in the daytime when your body can take it. And that's where you're fasting at the best time, which is night to recover. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, I'm so glad Harry, we had a chance to chat. And as you, you start writing your third book, let me know and, and we'll bring you back on to talk about what you're writing about. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me guys. I really appreciate the time and uh, the audience. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bet. It was great. And thanks to you guys for, uh, for coming live and, and interacting and Megan for moderating our, our chat. Awesome. Peace out, y'all. Hey, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>